Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want you to picture a big, giant toilet. Maybe it's about the size of a round swimming pool or the size of a big, big hot tub. And it swirls around and swirls around. And it looks so fascinating to you because it's, it belongs to Satan and he knows how to decorate. He knows what to put around the pool to make you want to come close and check it out. Now, you may think, okay, this looks like a pool, but I kind of think it might be a toilet. So we just have to be careful that we don't get in there and nobody flushes it because we don't want to get sucked under. But because it's so intriguing and it has all the goodies and all the trinkets you like, you have to get in. Yeah. And it looks really exciting. So you go swimming head first in a giant toilet that belongs to the devil. You know you don't belong there. You know it's on the wrong side of the fence. But you got to go check it out because it just, oh man, it's got some stuff attached to it that you know you love. And you just got to go. You know, you inquiring minds want to know these things and you've got an adventurous spirit. So you've got to go check it out. And you jump in head first because you know how to swim. You just try to make sure that you don't you know, you get out before somebody pulls that lever because you don't want to be flushed. You really take those kind of chances with your life. You really think that's wise? Okay, check this out. <laughs> Picture someone swimming head first in somebody's toilet. There's water. The person can't seem to tell the difference between a toilet bowl and a swimming pool. So they jump head first into the toilet bowl. Now picture that. How nasty is that? All the bacteria that's in the toilet. Somebody just used it. The water flushes. They hear the water. They go in the bathroom and decide to stick their head in the water and see if they can learn how to swim. Now does that sound ludicrous? It sounds ridiculous. To picture it looks just as stupid as can be, doesn't it? But then the person has a nice big swimming pool in the backyard. Beautiful swimming pool, well-maintained. Person doesn't go out there and get in that pool. No. No, they'd rather wade around in the toilet. That is just about how ridiculous it is for some of us who choose life on our terms rather than life on God's terms. We would rather swim, wade, walk, stand, live in toilet water than to swim in a nice clean pool or a beautiful lake. No, 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 we don't want to do that. We'd rather hang out around the toilet. Now, some of you wonder why there's so much hardship in your life. Some of you wonder why you go through so many changes and why it seems like you go from crisis to crisis, from trial to trial, from, uh, it seems like something's always wreaking havoc in your life. You go from chaos to hassle, from harassment to problems, and you just can't seem to make head or tails out of it. And you wonder if God is punishing you. No, no. But when you hang out around the toilet, you're hanging around bacteria, you're hanging around germs, you're living so far beneath your privilege. That is a form of living in the flesh, living by the dictates of the flesh. You're living by the rules of contamination rather than rules of righteousness. And you wreak havoc in your own lives and you get infected, and you get sick, and weakness comes, and you lose strength. You have no more stamina. You have no standards to stand by. And you wonder, why is everything going helter-skelter in your life? 
Well, when you live by the tick by the dictates of your flesh and hang around the water of the toilet, you can't expect much out of your life. And your life starts to stink. Everything stinks. Everything is fouled up, just nasty, just all junked up. It just looks like you're, you're walking in crap, you're living in crap, crap is all around you, you get the crappy end of the stick. Wow, what a life, y'all. Living and swimming in the devil's toilet. So I pray that you choose life rather than death. I pray that you choose God's ways rather than yours. We think there are pros for living in the flesh because there are certain things in the flesh that we like. We don't want to cut loose. Hey, hey now. But they all have a stinger at the end. There's a consequence we do not want to deal with. You ever hear the expression in the street, don't write no check, your behind can't cash now. Yeah, well, that's what we do in our lives. When we live according to the dictates of the flesh, we write all kind of bounce checks. We write stuff we can't cover, and it comes back to haunt us. The choices we make in our lives that have nothing to do with the purposes of God and all to do with the desires of the flesh. Help us, Lord. See you later on this afternoon. 12.15. Pacific, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. God bless you.